Hello, my crafty friends. It is that time of year, springtime, which means it's time to make some Easter crafts using Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started. It all just goes away. The things I plan to say. Oh, baby. Now I found this adorable little truck at the Dollar Tree and it's just so cute. I just love this little truck, but I wanted to make it over and make it more 3D. So I had this paint in my stash from Hobby Lobby that was on clearance and I decided I wanted the truck to be blue, kind of a robin's egg blue. I thought that would look nice for springtime. So I went ahead and painted the entire truck blue. Now you can see the fenders of the truck have some glitter on them, which is really cool because adding this paint to it gives it some texture and it just looks really nice. So I made sure to paint all of the edges and the corners of the truck as well because I don't want to have any of that MDF board or whatever these signs are made from. I didn't want that to show through. So I did go ahead and paint this with two coats of paint so that none of the original pink will show through. And once my paint was dry, I went in and painted the tires with some black acrylic paint. I believe this is just folk art acrylic paint that you can buy at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, anywhere. And again, I made sure to paint all of the edges. I don't want that MDF board showing through on the bottom of my tires. Now, once that was dry, I went back with some silver paint. And at first I was going to use my Cricut machine to cut out some vinyl to write spring is here, but I could still see the spring is here through the paint. So I just took that silver paint and I just went over the original lettering with the silver paint. And you can see I also painted the door handle as well as the running board and the hubcaps for the tires with the silver paint too. Next, I took a white chalk paint marker and I outlined everything on the truck. So I outlined the door as well as the back of the truck and even onto the hood because I wanted to add a little bit of dimension so you could see the details of the truck and that way it looks like a truck. All right, now the truck is all finished. And now I'm going to add the 3D aspect of it. So I have lots of little flower stems and flower pieces and I thought, how cute would that look to be hanging out the back of the truck? So I started by taking lots of different pieces of greenery, like the stems and the leaves, and then I added in the flowers and filled up the entire back of the truck with the flowers. That's originally how it was. It was filled with flowers on the original piece and I thought this would look really cute and I love this, it's so adorable. And I thought this would look really nice if it was standing up. So I had some remnants of some Dollar Tree signs and I just used hot glue and secured those to the back of the truck right behind the tires. So that way you can't see those when the truck is standing up. And here is my finished farmhouse style spring truck filled with flowers. Isn't that adorable? I'm really happy with that and I think it looks really cute.
All right, for my next project, I have these terracotta tiles. I have so many of them, so I decided to make a vase. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree self sticking tile and I'm going to cut pieces out that I'm going to place on top of the vase. So it's literally like I'm making tiles out of the self stick tile. And I did do this in another video and I liked it so much that I thought this would be a really fun addition to add to my Easter decor too. So for every side of my vase, I need to have a tile. And I just used a Sharpie to trace out the sides onto the tile. And then I did use a little bit of the Dollar Tree wood glue to secure the adhesive backing to the tile, otherwise it will fall apart. And next I just applied the cutout tiles to my vase. So all four sides of the vase have a piece of that Dollar Tree tile. Now I do wanna go ahead and make sure everything is blended together. So I'm using a little bit of painter's caulk and I'm going to put that on the top edge and this will make it look like it's one piece. So it's really easy just to smooth down the caulking and then allow it to dry. And once it was dry, I went back with some chalk paint. This is white chalk paint and yes, it is in a Dollar Tree container because I do like to reuse the containers, but this is chalk paint. And I just painted all four sides of the vase with this white chalk paint. Now these tiles are really fun to work with for crafting because it's easy to cut them and they have this raised pattern, which makes it really fun to get a little creative once you get it the color you want it to be. If you wanted to leave it silver, you could, but I wanted mine to look a little more farmhouse, which is why I used the white paint. And this is my planter when it is all dry. It's hard to see that raised tile pattern on there, but I am going to take care of that by applying a little bit of folk art wax. Now this is just a tiny, tiny bit just to brush over the pattern so that you can see it a little bit better. And I find that using a darker accent color works best but if you wanted to, you could reverse that and have a brown planter and white accents or any color that you really wanted. And even the paintbrush that I'm using is from the Dollar Tree. These work really well. I do find that they don't last very long. The bristles do shed out pretty easily, but you get two in a pack for $1.25. And for a craft project like this, they do work really well. And that is my planter. I really like how you can see the tiles. And here is the planter on a shelf with some spring tulips. Super cute and super easy using stuff that I already had. Now I found these bunnies at Target. They were in the Target dollar spot. They were $5 and $3. So if you can't find bunnies at the Dollar Tree, you can find them at 
different places. Walmart even has a dollar spot section now, and they are affordable at around between three and five dollars. But I wanted my bunnies to look like cement. And I had this folk art chalk paint and I thought this would look really pretty on the bunnies and it will definitely make it look more like cement or like kind of like a pottery barn style. I wanted to make them look antique and aged and the chalk paint works really well for this. So I just painted each of the bunnies with the chalk paint to give them a solid coat of that gray paint. And I've watched lots of videos and looked at Pinterest to find out how to make these Easter bunnies look more like Pottery Barn. And there are a lot of different ways that you can paint them. It is fun to see how other people paint them and then figure out how you wanna paint it for your own decorating. And if you are gonna be doing a project like this, I would highly encourage you to use a high quality paintbrush with longer bristles, like a wash style brush. That makes it easy to be able to get into all of the nooks and crannies, and then you don't see the brush strokes from the paint. And I think the chalk paint actually helps with this too. Now, if you're having a lot of fun watching all of the different DIY projects that I do, I would love it if you would click that subscribe button and then click that bell notification. That way you'll be alerted every time I have a new DIY video coming out. Now, once my bunnies were all dry, I decided to take a couple of different chalk paint colors. I took some in a very light gray and then just gently brushed over the bunny because I want these bunnies to look kind of old and aged. So using the different colors of chalk paint really helped to give it more of an aged appearance. And with that lighter gray, it really makes it look like concrete. And sometimes it may seem like your project isn't gonna turn out or you're not really happy with how the painting or the over painting is going, but just give it some time and work through it. Then you will get the look that you're going for. So don't give up. When I started with this bunny, I was a little intimidated and I was thinking he's not really turning out how I want him to, but just by adding more paint and just sticking in there with the project, the bunny actually turned out the way I wanted it to. And I repeated the same technique on the smaller bunny, the one that's kind of like squatting down. And I think this is a good lesson because I was very timid with the first bunny, but with the second one, I knew it was gonna turn out. I just needed to keep applying the paint. So I'm hoping that this shows you that the more you do it, the better you're going to get and the more you're going to own your technique of painting and you'll be happy with it. Now, once the bunnies were dry, I did go back with a little bit more so I could add a little bit more paint to give it a little bit more accent. And here are my adorable little Easter bunnies all ready to be used in my decorating. I love using bunnies in my decorating for Easter and for spring. So I have the bunnies that I painted along with some white bunnies. And I believe I got those at Target Dollar Spot as well. And then I just added in some greenery on top of a long board that I added some handles to. And this is going to be my centerpiece for Easter this year. And I find by adding like different stems of the greenery and not one huge section, I can take those little pieces of green and just place them where I want them to be around the focal point of my display. And I also got these Easter eggs from the Dollar Tree and they're so cute because they have like the speckling pattern all over them. And I like the softer pastel colors. So I decided to add the Easter eggs in with my bunny centerpiece as well. And here are my bunnies on my centerpiece for my dining room table for Easter this year, all staged and ready to welcome our kiddos home for the Easter holiday. Now this one is really easy. I got these in a Michael grab bag or box and I couldn't think of anything to do with these little carrots. So I thought it would be fun to make them more rustic and farmhouse style. And I have a lot of jute twine. So I just wrapped the jute twine around the carrots. I wasn't sure if this was gonna turn out or not, but I thought, you know what, let's just give it a try and see what happens. So I just started at the top of each of the carrots and then wrapped the twine around all the way down. I did use hot glue to secure the jute in place as I went. And I found that by going slowly and being very methodic with this process, it was easy to keep the jute very close to the previous turn of the jute 
and make sure that it was covering all of the underneath that purple of the carrot. And it's little accents like this that really elevate your decor in my opinion. And once I got to the end of the carrot, I added a little bit of hot glue and then just held it for a second and then trimmed off the remaining jute. And these are the carrots. They actually look really nice. I really like those compared to what they were before. Oh my gosh, this is such a fun project. You can find these Dollar Tree Easter wreaths for $1.25 right now. They are so fun. And with a couple of the Dollar Tree dusters, you can have a very pretty Easter wreath. So all I did was take these dusters and I hot glued them to the wreath form. I started in the middle on the bottom and then worked my way around the sides. And I think you can see on my mat that these floor dusters really shed. They are really messy when you cut them apart. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be doing this project. They're great for dusters, but they sure do shed when you cut them apart to use them in crafts. If you can't find these dusters at the Dollar Tree, you could also use some really big, thick white yarn. That would work just as well. Now, once I had the face of the bunny done, then I moved on to the ears. And each ear took one of the dusters. I just put hot glue around the edges and folded the sides of the duster over. Now I did use my Dollar Tree clamps because this will really help to keep that duster in place while that glue is setting up. And when both of the ears were done, then all I had to do was fill in the rest of the wreath form. So I cut pieces of those dusters and then secured them in place with the hot glue. And again, this is where the clamps really come in handy so you can work on different parts of your project and still secure down the pieces of the other parts. Now it gets a little tight when you're doing that last section, but just go ahead and put a lot of glue onto it and fold it up and over to secure that last little piece in place. Then you can go around and fluff up your bunny and it really looks like a bunny. Next, I took a few flowers for like a flower crown for the bunny wreath. I took one big flower for the center and then I had these two pink roses. I put one on either side. And I took a little bit of greenery stems and I put that on either side of the flowers. And there's my bunny wreath. That was so easy to do. So to get started, we're going to need a wreath like this one that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. 
And I'm going to use this Folk R Dark Wax to darken up these beads on this wreath. And I was a little worried about this, if it would work or not, but I was like, you know what, let's just go for it and see what happens. So I just painted on the wax onto all of the beads individually. And this is a little bit of a time consuming part, but I promise it will be worth it in the end. So working in small pieces of the wreath, I just made sure to coat each of the beads with a lot of the wax. And once I had a small section completely coated with the wax, I used a tea towel and just wiped off the excess wax. And I really like that color. So then I just continued the process all the way around the wreath working Again, working in small sections, coating each of the beads, making sure to have a good coat of wax on all of the beads, and then wiping off the excess. And if you wanted to leave the beads plain, you totally could, or you could whitewash them. Whatever works best with your decor, you can do. Just like all of my crafts, do what works best for you. All right, so now our bead wreath is just about done. I'm just going over a little bit more just to make sure I don't have any bare pieces of wood remaining. And next I took this bunny hanger that I got at the Dollar Tree, it was $3, and I cut off the back because I don't need that hanger. So I just got rid of the jute hanger that was on the back, and I need to get rid of these bunny tails because I don't want to end up painting the bunny tails. So I used my scissors and removed the tails from the wooden plaque. Next again, I'm using the Folk Art chalk paint and I'm using a chalk paint brush and I'm just going to paint the bunnies. Now the paint that I'm using is called sheepskin and I really like this color, but again, if you wanted to leave it plain, you could, or if you wanted to use a different color or even maybe three different colors, you could do that as well. So I just coated all of the bunnies with a good coat of the chalk paint and I made sure to get all of the side pieces in case they show as well. And I wanted to have my bunnies on the side stand out a little bit. So while the paint was still wet, I took some more of the wax and I just added a little bit of wax to either of the bunnies that are on the ends. I want the center bunny to stay like he is. So I just added some wax and then I just blended it into the paint, which was still wet. Like that it gives a little bit something different to the bunnies on the end so you can really see the bunnies 
And once the bunnies were done, it was time to reattach their little cotton tails. So I just took the tails that were originally on and just glued them back in place. Now, one thing that I have seen on some other bunny hangers like this is that they have this really cute burlap flower on the center bunny. So I didn't have a burlap flower, so I decided to use some burlap ribbon that I already had from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to make a flower with this burlap ribbon. And basically, I just cut out petals, and these are going to be the flower for the center bunny. So I did larger petals on the bottom and then I made some smaller petals that are going to be a second layer on top of the first layer. And next I just hot glued the petals onto the center bunny. And I repeated the process with a second layer of smaller petals. Next I took some Dollar Tree lace and I made some loops and I put four of those loops in the center of the two layers of petals of the flower. And then I had to have a center for my flower, so I took a little bit more of the burlap ribbon and just cut off a piece and hot glued that to the center. And there is my flower. Pretty cute. And then I had this galvanized welcome sign that I also got from the Dollar Tree a long time ago, and I thought that would be really pretty on top of the bunnies. So. That's what I did. All right, so now I'm gonna set up the wreath. And I have so many faux flowers or silk flowers that I just took a couple of stems and thought this would be really pretty and look really spring-like. So I just added them to the bottom of the wreath. And I think this is supposed to be like lamb's ear. I'm not 100% sure, but I had them and it actually goes really well with the floral stems that are already there. So I just added those. And to secure them, I just used a little bit more of the Dollar Tree lace and really secured these different floral pieces in place. And next I had some more fake flowers that I got. I think I got this at Walmart. So I just kind of pulled all the heads off and then attached the flowers to the center where it will be covering up the lace that I used to secure those stems in place. Isn't that pretty? And now all I have to do is attach my welcome bunnies onto the wreath itself. And then this project will be done. So what I did was just take some hot glue and put it on a bunny ear and a bunny foot on both sides and then secured it to the beaded portion of the wreath. Just like that. 
I really love how it turned out. And like most of my projects, you can get it done in an afternoon. Dollar Tree has these adorable little Easter rabbit Easter eggs. And you can fill them if you want to, or I guess you could use them in your decor just like this. They are a little bit hard to put together when they have come apart, but they were so cute. And I thought these would be really fun to cover with yarn. Now the egg shape is a little bit hard to work with. I found that it's best to start at the top of the bunny and then apply the yarn or whatever you're going to be using. For one of the bunnies, I did use the jute twine because again, Everybody has jute twine, right? And it's really affordable. So I covered the entire egg portion of the bunny with the jute. And then I just worked my way down to the bottom. Now the bottom is where it gets really tricky. So when the jute started sliding around, I just secured it in place. And then I started from the bottom and worked my way back up the egg where there was already jute. And I found that by using a craft stick, I could push that jute down onto the egg a little bit easier. Now, once I had the entire egg covered, then I went back up and did the ears of the bunny. Now, if you're gonna be doing this project, I can tell you that working with the jute is very challenging, but if you have some yarn, the yarn is a lot easier to work with while covering these bunny Easter eggs. So if you're gonna be doing a project like this, I would highly recommend using yarn over using jute. And then I just worked my way back up the bunny with the yarn. And to finish it off, I just had to do the ears. Again, the yarn is a lot easier to work with than the jute twine. And I just wrapped the yarn around each of the ears. Now, if you're going for a more primitive or rustic look in your decorating, these yarn bunnies are a really nice addition. Now, I wanted to add little cotton tails. I had some Dollar Tree pom-poms, but they were a little bit too big for my bunnies. So I just trimmed them down to the size that I wanted them to be. Then I attached the pom-pom to the bottom of the egg and my Easter bunny is done. I think they look really cute. And like I said, I think they are an excellent addition to a rustic style Easter decor. So there you go, a whole bunch of Easter DIY decor that you can do rather quickly using Dollar Tree items as the background or the original supply for your crafts. I really hope that I've inspired you to add some new pieces to your Easter decor this season, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy crafting.